I'm Armando Hasringan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe. Join the forming group for the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasringan. In this video, we are going to look at control of respiration. Now, the medullary respiratory centers are control respiration. The medullary respiratory centers are made up of the ventral and dorsal groups. The ventral group is responsible for the, the rhythmicity, you can say, of breathing. If that didn't all make sense, let's look at a diagram. So here I'm drawing the brain. If we zoom into the brain stem region here, we can locate where the medulla oblongata is. Here I'm drawing three red circles. The two red circles here make up the medullary respiratory center, which is made up of the ventral and dorsal respiratory groups the ventral being the front and the dorsal being the back. The dorsal uh, group is responsible for uh, inspiration, uh, the diaphragm, and the ventral one is responsible for the rhythmicity of breathing. But then you have this other respiratory so uh, but then you have this other respiratory center located in the pons known as the pontine respiratory center. The pontine respiratory center will interact with the medulla respiratory center to smooth respiration. It will provide tonic input to the medullary network here to help coordinate smooth respiratory rhythm. So they will send signals to here and then the medullary respiratory centers will work together and then will send signals um, for inspiration and expiration. So to understand um, how it sends signals for inspiration and expiration, let us look at the thorax. So here I am drawing the thorax, which is made up of the ribs here, as well as the sternum here. Now within the thorax, we find the lungs. Beneath the lungs, we have an important muscle known as the diaphragm. The diaphragm is one is one of the important muscles in respiration. And then you have another important muscle in respiration, which are known as the intercostal muscles, which run between the ribs. Here I'm drawing the trachea, which connects the larynx to the lungs. So in a very simplified way, the respiratory center will send impulses to the muscles of the lungs to trigger inspiration or expiration. So for example, here we have impulses being sent via neurons to the intercostal muscles to cause inspiration. So the ribs will rise and the impulses are also being sent to the diaphragm to cause inspiration. So the diaphragm will descend. The respiratory center will send impulses to cause inspiration and expiration. The more, the quicker the impulse, the faster the breathing. The slower the impulse, the slower the breathing. And that's an important concept to understand. Now, let us see what can influence the respiratory center. And so what can increase uh, respiration, so increase breathing, and what can suppress breathing, so slow down breathing. Firstly, we have the higher centers of the brain, which, uh, con which where we can have voluntary control. So as we know, we have some control over our breathing. We can stop breathing for a while before, our before the brain just takes over. The higher centers of the brain are also important for the perception of pain, emotion, and temperature. And so all these factors can uh, influence the respiratory rate. So they will firstly either stimulate or suppress the pontine respiratory center, which then will uh, stimulate or suppress the medullary respiratory center and respiration itself. But the main a regulator or influencer of respiration would be uh, the peripheral chemoreceptors, which are located in the carotid and aortic bodies. 
they detect changes in the blood, chemical changes in the blood. So for example, if they detect a decrease in oxygen, a decrease in blood pH, which means an increase in hydrogen ions, and an increase in, in CO2, this will stimulate or trigger the chemoreceptors located here in the carotid bodies and aortic bodies, and they will stimulate these chemoreceptors to stimulate the respiratory center. And so when the respiratory center is stimulated, um, there will be a quicker respiratory rate. So you will breathe in and breathe out quicker. And so you can breathe in more oxygen and you can breathe out more carbon dioxide to neutralize everything. There are also chemoreceptors located in the medulla known as central chemoreceptors. The medullary chemoreceptors do exactly the same thing. They can detect changes in pH. A decrease in pH, for example, and an increase in CO2 will stimulate the chemoreceptors to, send, uh, to stimulate the respiratory center so that you could breathe faster and thereby breathing out more carbon dioxide and inhaling more oxygen. You also have receptors in your muscles and in your joints. And these will be stimulated when you exercise. And so when you exercise, these receptors will stimulate the respiratory center so you can breathe quicker. And it's important to breathe quicker when you exercise so you can breathe, so that you can take in more oxygen and you can blow out all the acid that has built up. And finally, you have things in your lungs that can uh, regulate the respiratory center. They can influence the respiratory center in the brainstem. Firstly, you have things called irritant receptors, which are uh, receptors that are protective in the lungs that help um, essentially blow off the irritant. And so when they're stimulated, they will suppress uh, the respiratory center to slow down respiration. And then you have stretch receptors in the lungs, uh, which cause the hearing breather reflex a reflex that is protective. It's a protective reflex initiated by extreme overinflation of the lungs. And so when these stretch receptors are stimulated, initiated, they will suppress respiration. So they will slow down the respiratory rate. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.